What are the PC specs, options, max graphics settings, as well as the balance between keyboard and mouse play? Well, that and a lot more I answer in this video, so stay in tune throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So with Halo Infinite's big PC blog development update coming out this Thursday, most likely, I went to my community page and asked you guys, Halo Infinite's PC dev update is coming out this month. What do you want to know from it? And you guys certainly reply with 130 plus comments and over 450 likes. So thank you so much for your participation, guys. And I thought you guys brought up some really interesting topics within those comments as well. So I decided to make a video talking about the PC development update and what people really want out of this thing. So if you guys like these kind of news and informational kind of videos or the kind of discussion, Q&A kind of stuff, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. Thistle Pear asks, I just want to see more gameplay of Infinite or new music. I don't think we're gonna get either one of those within this development update. I think they're really gonna focus on more of just like the technical aspects of PC and what is 343 going to do to take advantage of the PC platform because there's a lot of other things besides just having really pretty graphics that go into a good version of PC for people to play. Though I do actually expect to see some new screenshots of Halo Infinite as PC will be a much more graphically impressive platform to play on, I would say, even though the Xbox Series X is certainly going to give it a run for its money and the game's kind of designed around that for the most part though you can also probably crank up the graphics to a lot higher fidelity than you can on any kind of console because that's just PC you can really push the limits of how well your hardware can run. Vangeli Asimakis asks settings for graphics and mouse and keyboard options how they balance weapons like sniper which are harder to use in close range on controller but a lot easier on mouse for PvP. This is a very interesting topic because you can't really have too much variation or really any variation when it comes to the shooting mechanics of the game. Like when it comes to like bullet magnetism spread on the weapon and ease of use kind of thing. So you can't have like the PC version act drastically different than like the controller version say like the controller version has like no spread or whatever like that but then the PC version does. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and it re really ruins the uh, continuity between playing games on different platforms since Halo Infinite is going to be the most accessible Halo game that's ever been created there needs to be a little bit of continuity within the gameplay so how do they balance this kind of stuff out well I think with the whole keyboard versus mouse thing I think the biggest thing is that these classic Halo games that we're playing on MCC were built from the ground up to be a console only experience Yes, I know there was a custom edition that was released on PC as well as Halo 2 Vista, but those were all released like years after the initial release of their console counterpart, so they were more of an afterthought. I think it comes down to bullet magnetism, red reticle range, player movement, as well as another big thing. It's a combination of all these little things kind of thrown together that makes something like controller being much more viable on MCC PC compared to mouse and keyboard. I mean, you can still do fine on mouse and keyboard, to be honest, uh, though there are going to be some situations where you might just miss a shot because you're playing on a massive keyboard and you don't have aim assist or any kind of benefits like that. Marbaz asks, how much a 3070 could crank for infinite? I think we actually might get a little bit about this because I would be shocked if we don't get some beautiful screenshots of what the max graphics possible for Halo Infinite could look like because from what we've seen for the recent development updates, just like the extra six months of development when it comes to, to the visuals of the game have really improved. Now they can't really show probably a whole lot but I think they're getting pretty close to a final visual presentation of the game as we do have E3 coming up in June most likely meaning that they would have to kind of settle on a build probably late May or something like that since it's kind of happening in mid-June for the E3 event and since we're pushing into May I think they're getting pretty close to set on what the graphics are going to be for the game because right now they need to kind of finalize that kind of stuff so when the game releases that you kind of just work more on optimization rather than redoing some kind of art styles to them but yeah, I absolutely want to see what the max graphics look like for Halo Infinite. And if you have a 3070, i very jealous because I really want a 3070 or a 3080 when it comes to Infinite's release. I need that. It's just hard, like almost impossible to get right now. So here, 117, friend of the channel here, asks, balancing between mouse and keyboard and controller, 
PC specific options, PC modding, PC optimization, specs for Halo Infinite. Now we already talked about the massive keyboard stuff, but PC specific options, something like being able to change your resolution, be able to change your field of view, uh, your brightness and contrast kind of stuff. What kind of anti-cheat that they're planning to use as well, since it is gonna be a free to play game. So that's actually gonna be a really big thing because I've seen that a lot of times, especially with Call of Duty Warzone being free to play. A lot of free accounts get made and they're strictly made for modding and they'll just come in and they'll just cheat their way up to the top and it's been something that's always been going on with Call of Duty Warzone this whole time. So anti-cheats can be a really important thing so I think that PC specific option is going to be very important. I don't think he really had that in mind when it comes to PC specific options but it's certainly something that needs to be taken into consideration. PC modding is another big thing as well. Are we going to be able to create content out of this game? Are people going to be able to modify it in certain ways so where they can, you know, either change some kind of graphic settings or do something kind of crazy like we've been seeing recently with MCC? I think it'd be an awesome addition. But personally, I don't have my hopes high for modding support, at least on the initial release of Halo Infinite, especially since it's going to be free to play that people like try to mess up with the multiplayer in some kind of way. But this game is going to be on Steam, so it most likely will be like a Steam Workshop page where you can easily download stuff to your game, which would be amazing. Amazing, but if there's only worthwhile stuff to do and PC optimization I actually brought this up in my video on Monday talking about this saying that there needs to be a way to where you can really dumb down the graphics to where lower end PCs can play this game most big name free-to-play games are relatively easy on your system like Valorant's not too graphically intensive Counter-Strike Go which is still super popular and free to play Fortnite really isn't that intensive either the only one I could think about is Call of Duty Warzone but even then I'm like I'm rocking a 1080 Ti and it seems to be running just fine at like 60 frames I just kind of lock it at that because I know I can't really hit 120 So if you want your game to really do well for a free-to-play game You need to have accessibility for lower end PCs to be able to play your game to boost up that player count But I hope we get a little bit of this within the development update and the last thing you brought up was PC specs for Halo Infinite shot here We also had the world of Intellion, Anad Shamara Ariel Garcia and Evan Sear all asking about PC requirements. That was the number one requested thing I saw with all the comments within that post. People want to know if their PC can run it. Will we get like definitive specs on what to expect for Halo Infinite with this development update? I don't think so. PC specs and requirements are kind of like the last thing that get updated right before the release of the game. Like we probably won't know about this until like the month before the release of the game in October. We'll probably know about this as most likely the release is going to be in November. Though I would expect it to be rather on par with more of the somewhat higher end games right now. Like something like Call of Duty I think is a really good example of where I think graphics can be right now where it's accessible but yet still looks good kind of thing. Especially when it comes to Warzone. Where like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I just locked at 60 frames and I'm using a graphics card of a 1080 Ti as well as my CPU is being a Ryzen 7 2700. I also expect to have a decent amount of RAM with the game. You might need to get 16 gigabytes of RAM. I personally have 32 because I do a lot of like streaming, gaming, editing, and things like that. But honestly, I wouldn't expect this game to be super graphically intensive because like I said, being it free to play, at least for the multiplayer side of things, they want to make it sure it's accessible for a lot of people so they can't make it like crazy intensive like you say like a a crisis or like a battlefield game where those are games are kind of pride themselves on their graphics and how beautiful those games look. I think Halo Infinite certainly does need to look good as well, which I thought the graphics honestly in the demo looked good. It's just the functionality of them was not very well done at all. So those are the top requests of people wanting to know about this PC development update coming out on Thursday, most likely for Halo Infinite. If you guys like these kind of informational videos, make sure you tap subscribe. If you'd be on the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, or miss any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right now. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.